my gosh. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in what's left of the soon to be underwater paradise of Fort Myers, Florida on this gorgeous <coughs> Sunday morning, February 2nd, 2020. Oh yes, it is Groundhog Day and spring has sprung, at least down here in South Florida. Spring has sprung and I hope spring has sprung wherever you are. I can only imagine what summer is going to look like, but since it is Sunday morning, you know, I love Sunday morning because I get to wear both of my hats here on YouTube and I uh, get to bring you today's Sunday Doomsday Sermon <coughs> as well as Monday's Chronicle of the Collapse. So uh, we can cover two birds with one stone and before I dive in today's, into today's sermon, I'm going to have to pitch you over in your own chair because i got to put my laptop here on the top of my lap. i got to change the laptop dog for the laptop computer. All right, before I dive in, I want to send out a huge thank you to kind-hearted listener Gaylene for her very kind contribution to... Uh, the let's call it the hip camp vision fund thank you very much for gay to gaylene for that and anyone who has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to support my vision here on youtube <coughs> whatever that is i really do really do the little dog and i really appreciate it so anyway, with that pleasant task out, out of the way, I want to get into today's Doomsday Sermon. I would say maybe five of you have sent me uh, the latest dispatch from this excellent website called CollapseOfIndustrialCivilization.com. There you go. Can't be any... Or straightforward than that, by this fellow, I have I have probably, I don't know how many sermons I've had from this mysterious fellow named X-Ray Mike 79. I've uh, been trying to track down Mike for an interview here on Collapse Chronicles. I've had no success. X-Ray Mike, in case you are listening to this, please get in touch with me so we can arrange to speak. But Mike's uh, latest assault on the, uh, the uninformed uh, about says it all. This is X-Ray Mike summing up the situation on Groundhog Day 2020. The apocalypse will not be televised. No, it won't be televised, but it will be brought to you here on uh, Collapse Chronicles and elsewhere in the doomosphere. Okay. The year is 2020 and climate change related disasters are in full swing while at the same time the most influential country in the world is under the leadership of someone who calls scientists foolish fortune tellers. And I'm going to put the link to this long essay and in this essay Mike gives you links to probably two dozen other articles to back up this essay. Um, Australia, another country being led to its slaughter by the willfully and criminally ignorant, is literally going up in flames as we speak. Its rich millennia old evolutionary legacy is disappearing before our eyes and then he uh, breaks down what's going on down there in Australia which I, I this is a long involved essay so I I'm not going to get to every word you need to go read this yourself 
The Australian Mega Fires are not a one-off, but just the latest manifestation of an increasingly disrupted global climate system. Australia's fate was predicted by scientists many years ago. The forever legacy of greenhouse gas emissions means the dust will not settle in any time scale appreciable to humans. Sea levels will continue to rise for millennia. Droughts and storms will grow in frequency and intensity. Thousand year rains will become common occurrences. Entire ecosystems will unravel and the human experiment will undoubtedly come to an end. And then he quotes uh, some folks from Australia. I think he might be quoting Brother Alm, actually, because uh, I've heard this quote before. But anyway, we have to move on. All right, one more nod to Australia before we move on to the bigger picture. Australia's annual fire season is only at its midpoint. Yet, the massive pulse of carbon from these bushfires is now, now at the midpoint, estimated at 900 million tons, double the country's annual emissions. Would you stop putting your back to the camera? You're being very rude to your fans. Double the country's annual emissions as horrific as the fires have made life on land, what is happening in Australia's oceans out of sight and mind is equally disturbing. But, of course, this is not confined to Australia. Scientists have found that a heat blob in the North Pacific Ocean killed a million seabirds and wiped out 100 million cod. We, that means humans, that means every single one of us humans on the planet, that's the we he's mentioning here. We are destroying the life support system to which all creatures, including man, are dependent. Yet, it does not appear that any climate disaster, no matter how catastrophic, will alter mankind's tragic path to extinction. Wiping out an entire continent's flora and fauna does not register on the stock market. No number of five alarm fire warnings planet Earth sends us will be heeded by this carbon-fueled corporate kleptocracy which carries us all toward a very dark future. Why would we expect any differently from an economic paradigm that tolerates no disruption as it plunders the planet in search of the almighty dollar? A report from two years ago called Australia's Extinction Crisis a, quote, national disgrace and described its institutions tasked with protecting threatened plants and animals as broken. We see today that nothing has changed to prevent Australia's national treasures from disappearing into the black void of the Anthropocene extinction, never to be seen or heard from again. In fact, Current assessments show extinction rates are accelerating. Then he breaks down this <clears throat> uh, study that he highlights here. Okay, just a few of the takeaways from the extinction rates are accelerating study. Number one, nature is in unprecedented decline. A substantial proportion of assessed species are threatened with extinction and overall trends are deteriorating with extinction rates 
increasing sharply in the past century. This decline is a direct result of human activity, the most devastating being changes in land and sea use, including natural habitat destruction. Since 1980, greenhouse gas emissions have doubled, raising average global temperatures by at least 0.7 degrees Celsius. 75% of fossil fuel burning and anthropogenic CO2 emissions in the atmosphere has occurred since 1970. Their effects are just beginning to be felt you know, talking about the lag time between carbon emissions and the effects of them. Okay, in the near future, climate change is expected to surpass the impacts of land and sea use changes as well as other drivers such as direct exploitation of organisms, pollution, and invasive alien species. And this is the very point I was uh, making with my brother at, at midnight, uh, is talking about how climate change right now is what I call the, the last horse and the pack of the horses of the apocalypse, but quickly gaining. Uh, and you will see the horse of the apocalypse, climate change, galloping ahead and bringing all the rest of the horses into a catastrophic pileup at the finish line. But anyway, this is Mike's uh, sermon, not mine. Wow, imagine this one. This one is in bold face. Increased human population and per capita consumption is a, I would say, the key driver of all the above. Thank you. By destroying the foundations of Earth's interconnected web of life, we are threatening our own health and existence. <clears throat> I am loath to repeat these numbers because no price can be placed on intact ecosystems, but the economic costs of this year's fire season in Australia are estimated to now be approaching $100 billion. We're halfway through and we are approaching $100 billion the costliest natural disaster in that country's history and in the U.S. the last decade has been unprecedented. And then he uh, breaks the, the, some of the statistics down uh, to the U.S. economy uh, with all of these charts and graphs. What's the bottom line? Uh, of this analysis, uh, this increase, you know, in, in the economic cost of uh, all of these disasters, this increase reflects a combination of increased exposure, vulnerability, and the fact that the that the fact that climate change is playing an increasing role in the frequency of some types of extremes that lead to billion dollar disasters. The finance industry is starting to see that climate change is an existential crisis, yet offers no alternative to their ideological stalemate of infinite growth on a finite planet. In fact, they, meaning the global banksters behind it all, in fact, they believe that the personal sacrifices, like don't breed, 
needed to halt greenhouse gas emissions will create a public backlash toward such efforts. In other words, business as usual will rule the day until the hard laws of physics, chemistry, and biology make our bubble economy impossible. We are undergoing that process right now as anthropogenic climate disruption returns planet Earth to the chaotic climate conditions of the Pleistocene, a time in which organized societies and agriculture will be impossible. Water shortages, degraded soils, and loss of pollinators will only compound the problem. No amount of accounting tricks will bring back the habitability of the planet. Cheap and abundant fossil fuels have given us modern science and technology which have allowed humans to feel detached and independent from nature, but when this civilization inevitably collapses, we will once again be at the mercy of the natural world. If we have destroyed the biosphere and set in motion a mass extinction event at a time when we strongly need to rely on nature, then our prospects for survival are very grim indeed. Yet another study, which he links you to here, released this week, shows that Earth's biodiversity is crashing under a perfect storm of global warming, extreme weather events, and human activity. Collapse of industrial civilization and its vast amount of specialization along with a simultaneous planet-wide ecological collapse can very easily lead to human extinction. It's not hard to imagine a third world war being ignited by deteriorating environmental conditions and resource depletion as nations fall under the sway of propaganda from demagogues inciting fear, hatred, and violence. With Earth Overshoot Day arriving earlier each year, we have arrived on the last stage of global civilization's doubling time. This is what, if you listen to my interview with Professor Tim Garrett, he uh, really talks about this. He really uh, explains this. Uh, concept here, the next 20 years will be the final tick of the clock in which our mass resource extraction, consumption, and waste irreparably damage the planet's regenerative abilities and life support systems. Decades of greenwashing, empty rhetoric, and regulatory capture by the fossil fuel industry will have brought us to this precipice. Then uh, he uh, puts this on a graph which looks a whole lot like a reverse hockey stick. Uh, the only question is what year will we go? It's not a question of if. The question is what year will we go over the cliff? And it's hard to tell. I would say according to this analysis, it's looking like right just before 2030 is when uh, whichever study this is showing over the cliff in a little less than 10 years, but absolutely in the next 20. All right, moving on from the reverse hockey stick. 
as you can see from the over the cliff, any mitigation efforts at this late date rely heavily on the fantasy of carbon capture with non-existent technologies that truthfully will never scale up to the enormous problem. To some degree or another, we are all in denial of what is unfolding in our final century as we go about our daily lives within a set of living arrangements completely incompatible to the survival of our descendants. Everyone is riding the peak of industrial civilization as we watch the world fall apart on our smartphones and LED TVs. In the meantime, the nightly news drones on about hyper-partisan politics and economic growth. That barely a vague mention is made in the news cycle of the most important story in mankind's history tells you all you need to know about who controls mass media and why the story of our imminent demise will remain buried. Our fossil record will be comprised mainly of plastics, radioactive waste, and billions of human bones and that of our domesticated animals. The remnants of wild animals will be extremely rare since we have supplanted them with our livestock. All civilizations, especially complex ones, eventually collapse. Ours, like many before, will be undone by overshoot of the environment's carrying capacity, albeit this time on a planetary scale and with no second chance for a do-over. And then uh, he winds up with a quote from Terence McKenna, probably since Terence died 20 years ago. This quote was probably made close to 30 years ago. Uh, wrap it up our sermon here, Terence. The apocalypse is not something which is coming. The apocalypse has arrived in major portions of the planet, and it is only because we, mainly referring to Americans, live within a bubble of incredible privilege and social insulation that we still have the luxury of anticipating the apocalypse. So I don't know about you guys here uh, on Groundhog Day. Uh, I am going to enjoy the luxury, the luxury of still being able to anticipate the apocalypse heading our way. We are going to be the last to fall but the bigger the, they come, the harder they fall. So the little dog and I, we are going to head out into this gorgeous day on this beautiful collapsing planet in Fort Myers, Florida before it goes underwater. And I highly suggest you get out and enjoy anticipating the apocalypse before the apocalypse gets here because I assure you, you will not enjoy that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little sermon and this little chronicle of the collapse, please take a, a couple of seconds to thumb up X-Ray Mike. If you did not like what X-Ray Mike had to tell you, please take a couple of minutes to thumb it down. And uh, by all means, wherever you are right now on YouTube, 
why don't you subscribe while you're here for more of this bright and cheery news. Now get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys. This little dog, are you ready to get out there and enjoy it?